the the step in the process maybe that everybody gets a little bit more frightened about is is it going to set up that's you know that's the always the big question but i always 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 just use the sure gel i find the best success with this so i put that in the ingredient thing so it's just the, you need strawberries you need sugar equal amounts of strawberries and sugar and the sure gel and water so those are the only ingredients that you need now, I want to tell you this, I'm showing you um, this jam with not local berries. These, you know, you, we get these at the grocery store right now. But I thought I wanted to teach you to make it now so that, that when the local berries come in in the beginning of May, like Scott's berries, those are the ones you really want to make the jam with. They, they make the best. Um, you know, they're just juicier and, and more flavorful than these. But this will this will be okay. I don't think I've ever made them do jam without fresh local berries, but it's okay. It'll be it'll be delicious still. It'll be better than the store bought stuff still. So, all right. Um, did Emerald jump on there? Not yet. Okay. So there are a whole set of instructions here for every different kind of fruit. But all you're gonna do is when you get your box, get this little thing out and then go down to where it says strawberry. And there's two sides. One side of the recipe is for cooked and the other side is for the freezer jam. And this is the one that I always have success with. So that's why I love the freezer jam. Um, I think all of you are cooks already anyway, and you know this, but you, they stress this in the recipe, so I'm gonna stress it too. You have to use the correct measuring cups. You never use a liquid measure to measure your strawberries out. You would never use this for, you know, this is only for liquid and this is only for dry. You would never measure your sugar in here, okay? So those are some of the little tiny things that might seem like, you know, a detail, but if you want it to turn out right, that's what you have to do. And they also stress in here, if you think, wow, four cups of sugar is a lot of sugar. I don't want to use that much. I think I'll reduce it. It will not turn out. <laughs> you have to use exactly what they tell you to use. But if you want less sugar, they do have a box that says uh, reduce sugar. And I think some that even say no sugar, like for a diabetic or whatever. So you, you just have to make sure that that's what your box says. So however much it tells you to put into it, you have to follow that rule, okay? So I've gone ahead and I've highlighted on my recipe, I think that is helpful to, like when you pull this out, it's easy to look at the wrong thing, get confused. But this says for the strawberry freezer jam, you need four cups of strawberries. And then it says, remove and discard the strawberry stems and then crush your berries. So you're gonna end up with, right over here it tells me, you're gonna end up with two cups of crushed strawberries. Because once you take these four cups and mash them down, you're gonna end up with two cups of strawberries. So I have half of my strawberries here, two cups. So here, this is cup number three. So see, I've already, I've just taken it, I stemmed them, took this, just the top, top part off of it, cut it up into little pieces, it doesn't matter how big, and dump them in the bowl, okay? So now I'm gonna show you what I just did. So you guys, if anytime you have a question or a comment, if you're ready, this is a good time for it. So anything you need to ask me. This is not a question, I'm just letting you know that Sue Millett is also trying to log in. So we'll see if we can get her in. Okay, good. She's an apples of gold lady. I was expecting Wayne Strikes to join us. <laughs> he's making jam now. I mean, he's making bread now. He just needs a little jam. <laughs> um, see like this berry, you see how this has white on it? The, the fresh local berries won't be like that. So I'm gonna not even use that one. The one caution about um, the fresh berries is if they are super, super ripe and juicy, that the juiciness of it will sometimes keep it from setting up. So you want them when they're just like a, you know, they're firm, but they're not overly ripe. Does that make sense? 
we are recording this, so. So here's my fourth cup. <laughs> and typically, um, when you get the fresh berries, that one doesn't look perfect. When you get fresh berries and you buy a quart of berries, usually that's four cups. This one I needed, to, I had a little bit more than, thank you, you give me a drink, excuse me. Thank you. <clears throat> so I had to take like, like three or four berries out of this package to make the four cups. But usually a quart is four cups of berries. So here's my four cups. And then it says to crush the berries. So I just take a potato masher and just press it down. And what you're doing is you're, you're getting the juices from it. Kind of what you would do is if you're making shortcakes or something. So I have this in like a kind of a, a wide flat bowl. It just makes it easier to mash them. And then after I do this, it says I need two cups of mashed berries. So I will take this measure and scoop it out and put it into another bowl and then add my sugar. Huh? You good? Hmm? It's okay. No, it's okay. I have my sous chef over here. <laughs> He's really waiting for a spoon or something to lick, you know. <laughs> Okay, so it, they don't have to be totally, um, you know, like your mashed potatoes would be. So this is probably good. <clears throat> Let me show you what the bowl looks like. So you can see that there's, there's still pieces of the strawberries, but you can see how juicy it is now. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this bowl that I'm gonna measure the sugar in. Can you take this for me, honey? And I'll actually make sure I have two cups of mashed berries. Some of you are the sourdough bread makers. I was telling Claire, this stuff is so good on toasted sourdough bread. It's good on biscuits. Um, what's it not good on? <laughs> it's good Whoa. by it's good by the spoonful. <laughs> okay, so see, I have right to the brim a cup of bigger mashed berries. And this should be the same, but again, I'm just going to measure it out because I want to be sure that I have the exact amount that they're telling me I have to have. It might even be a little bit more than that, and if it is. I won't use them all and it looks like it is. So this makes five cups of jam. So let me show you. Okay, there's cup number two and I still have a little bit left in my bowl so I'm not gonna use this part. I have a question. Yeah, can you wash that and dry it for me? Yes. Um, like what if, what if your kids don't like a lot of uh, lumps in their jam. Is it possible to like mash it too much? Like would it mess it up if you mashed it too? Uh, probably not. Um, it would, I don't know. I've, you don't want to puree it. I know that because then you're really going to get a lot of juice. So I think you need to be careful. You're maybe wanting to make, um, this is jam. this is jam. Um, I'm trying to think. What, what what is what is it called when you just have like just the smoothness? Is that a jam? I guess it is. Jelly. Preserves. Jelly. What's that? Preserves. Preserves. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. Okay. So my first instruction. I'm gonna read this to you just so you, uh, you'll know I'm following along with what they said. Use the dry measuring cup and measure your fruit. Then it says. Um, Let's see, measure the exact amount of sugar. So we did the fruit, we mashed the fruit, measure the exact amount of sugar, add to the fruit and let it stand for 10 minutes. So 
and you all you all are cooks you know this I'm gonna but I'm going to show you anyway <laughs> the way you measure it is I could take a knife but um I'm just gonna use my finger one cup and I have to say it out loud can you hand me a knife um because it's easy to forget thank you two I'm checking it to make sure yep three I'm pretending y'all are sitting at my bar counter right here <laughs> right there's four so are we it. what so are we yeah so I use this bowl for two reasons just one so you'll be able to see what I'm doing in here but you can see that it starts getting really um, thick so you're gonna leave this we're gonna stir it in here and leave it set for 10 minutes and just like when you make strawberry shortcake and you add the sugar to the strawberries you know you let it set up a little bit so it gets juicy you'll see that happen here so can you set a timer for 10 minutes and I do use a timer to make sure that I've got the time down and you look at it now and you're like how in the world that ever going to be jam. Uh, Kelly, your question too about the chunks of the fruit in there. Um, it it will be it would be it'll be more liquidy than it looks like it will be right now because you can see like all that sugar in between each piece of fruit will be jelly. Start the timer yeah. So in the instructions it says um, where am I? Um, add the exact amount of sugar, let stand for 10 minutes, stirring occasionally. So every now and then, just come in, just give it a stir. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and tell you that also um, you can use, if you have like old jelly jars and things, we are not canning these. So it's not as important. Um, like if you were going to can green beans or something that you have the right kind of jar. If you have old jelly jars that you've saved, those will work just fine. But um, this makes five cups of jam. So this is will hold about a cup. So, but I have some that are a little bit smaller, some like this. Um, I don't like having the great big jars of jam. Um, I'd rather have like five small jars or six or seven, whatever. So in, to sterilize these, I put them in the dishwasher because that is just great. And then um, have my seals ready. And again, because we're not, it's not like we're not doing a canning process. We're just putting them in here. They're gonna set on the counter um, for 24 hours. I think that's correct. And then yes, you'll let it stand at room temperature for 24 hours and then you can refrigerate it and you can keep in the refrigerator for up to three weeks or you can pop them in your freezer and it'll last for a year. If you don't eat it all before then. <laughs> okay, so what questions do you have? Anything? The instructions you're reading from, is that from the sure gel? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's really, it really does give you really, really good instructions. It tells you, you know, everything that I'm saying to you. Um, so, and I'll also tell you that before I start, I make sure that I have everything set up. I had my jars ready, the fruit was ready to go. And then back here on the counter, I mean, on the stove, I have a small saucepan, and this is what's inside the sure gel packet. This is the stuff that makes the jam set up. So, and I have, um, it says three fourths cup of water, and I'm gonna go ahead and let me mix it up right here. This has to, um, I think this is the part that might be just like people get thrown off, and this can make or break your jam. So it says in the instructions, let me read it to you. Add pectin mixture, um, let's see, wait a minute. Um, no. Stir one package of sure gel, pectin, um, and three-fourths cup of water in a small saucepan. 
So we're gonna mix it together. Let's do that right now. And it says it might start out a little bit lumpy, but it'll smooth out. So it kind of looks like jello or pudding mixture, whatever, the, the dry stuff. I use a whisk. So the three fourths cup of water. And then it says to, to bring it to a boil over high heat. So you don't set your timer yet. So when I'm gonna put this on the stove, I'm gonna bring it to a boil over high heat. And as soon as I see there's a good boil on the water, I'll set my timer for one minute. And it has to boil and you have to stir it constantly the whole time that it's on the stove. Okay, you have a question about that? So just, uh, it looks, I don't know, like sugar water or something. Let me see, hard to show you. And you can see this is getting more liquidy as it's sitting here. So how much time is on the timer? Five, three, five, three, five minutes. Okay. Is Lauren on here? Is Lauren there? No, I don't see her. Well, there's more. Hmm. There's more pictures than what you have. Okay. I'm here. You are there? Yes, I am. Are you, are you making jam? No. Okay. I'll go over here. Did you get the stuff? Yes, I picked it up today. Yay. It's kind of good. I mean, if you have it now, see, after watching it, then you can just make it right away. And you'll say, yeah, I can do this. Actually, this is being recorded too, so um, you can go back and watch it if you need a little help at one point or another. So have you all thought of a name for this class? Come on. Who wants a free jar jam? <laughs> we had somebody email the church, Fane Grog, for those of you that know Fane. He said, I would love to buy some jam, strawberry freezer jam from you all. And you can use the funds to be able to help your next apples or gold class. <laughs> okay, but my other little thing that I wanted to say to you is, you know, I'm teaching you this just like we do the bread or just any other cooking class, because this is such a great way to be a blessing to other people. Um, I said, I gave my last jar of jam to Cameron for his birthday. Um, a little, if you do like little jars like this, and then you do the little tiny loaves of bread, what a great gift that is to be able to give to a neighbor or to a coworker or somebody that needs the Lord. It's just such a great, it's a, it's a blessing to be able to share that with other people. So your family will love it and they will love you for making it, <laughs> but um, use it to be a blessing to other people. That's, that's my, my main emphasis and desire in showing you to make this. Questions, anything else while we wait for this? We've got three minutes. I just thought I would add to the um, to how much you smash the strawberries. Yes. I, I usually um, smash mine more than that. They still have some texture, but there is a lot more juice than what you had, and I've never had a problem with it setting up. So. Good. No. Okay. There you go, Kelly. You can mash them. Yeah. That's good to know. I like it chunky. You like it chunky? Mm-hmm. Um, a friend of mine has made it, had made the jam several times and she's had trouble with it setting up. And I don't know if it's the juiciness of the berries or whatever, but I will say this, if you, if you make it and it doesn't turn out, don't give up, try again. It's worth it. It's worth the effort. Okay. So I have two minutes left on this. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, boil this. Maybe you want to bring the camera. Can you bring it up this way? 
Can you bring that? I'll try to get it reset again. I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Just leave I'm it. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So I will tell you what's happening. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna keep stirring it while it starts to boil. And there's not there's such a little bit amount of liquid that it's gonna boil very quickly. I have one of those eyes that um, you know that it goes really fast. It's a high heat really quickly. And you know that there are other lots of other fruits that you can make. The freezer jam, apricot, blackberry, blueberry, cherry, peach is really good. Um, this one sounds good, peach and vanilla bean, mango, red raspberry, red raspberry, peach, and strawberry, blueberry. So you are not limited to strawberries. But that's just our favorite. <laughs> and I guess because they're more accessible than the other fruits all year long. I'm surprised you haven't been doing your little dance vibe. <laughs> I'll do it now that it's recording. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, my husband was coming past the counter before everybody else came and he was, oh yes, here we go. Can you stir the strawberries? Can you step up and stir the strawberries for us? I need a haircut. COVID-19 haircut. How come, how come if I stand up here, I can't be seen, but my wife can be seen down here? Watch it. It has gotten really, it's, it's completely smooth and it's just getting to where it looks like it might boil. Oh. Yeah, that's good. So when after it boils, it says to add the um, pectin mixture to the fruit and stir it until three minutes or until the sugar is completely dissolved and no longer grainy. This is getting close to boiling. I'm sorry, I wish I could show you all this step right here. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bubbly, but I want it to a full, full boil. Okay, it's a rolling boil. You know what I mean by that, right? <laughs> I'm gonna hit the timer and stir it the whole time. Kelly, do you know what I mean by that? Rolling boil? Yes, I know. Okay, just check it. Remember, I once to watch an egg for three minutes in a rolling boil. <laughs> yes. I'm still trying to find the milk that evaporated. Go right into my fruit. Wait, Emerald never got on, did she? Is she on there? Emerald, are you there? She's on there. Oh, yay. Okay, 
So three minutes, two, three twenty nine, three thirty one. See how easy was that? The next thing we're gonna do is put it in the jars. Could I have a wet paper towel? It's sticky, all that sugar. So you can even see like <clears throat> probably on sides of the bowl, the sugar, it's grainy. It's, so they're saying to stir it for three minutes. So thank you. So that um, most of the sugar gets dissolved. Um, I don't know if y'all have seen recently that uh, Paula Dean has been posting on YouTube some cooking videos, like just from her home. It's kind of reminiscent of her old show, that when she first started doing her cooking show before she went to New York or wherever to film. And um, she's just had some, some really good recipes and things. I love that. But anyways, one day I was watching one of her videos and then it, popped on to the next video was uh, one of her old cooking shows. And she was showing gifts that you could make from your kitchen. And I got so inspired by watching that. But I thought, you know, even if you just give somebody a jar of jam and you put, they've got some really pretty lids like this, or they've got red ones with the red and white check, whatever. And then just tie a little um, string of like these kind of twine, around it or a raffia or anything like that and a little tag it's just a great gift a hostess gift somebody invites you to their house for dinner and take them a jar of jam um she also on her show she did um seasoning mixes that i have one right there now um it's just you mix up this had chili powder in it and cumin and um, parsley and dried chives, salt and onion flakes. And then you ch attach a tag to it that says you add it to a certain amount, like take three tablespoons of that and add it to sour cream and mayonnaise, I think mixture together. And um, it makes like a vegetable dip or a potato chip dip. Anyway, little food gifts like that. So you don't have to be a bread baker. You can make all kinds of fun things from your kitchen. Okay, I think we're there. So, I think you can tell, let's see if I can show you without spilling it. It looks really smooth. And then I always just use a gravy ladle. And it set at, tells you to leave a half an inch at the top of the jar to, for the fruit to expand in the freezer. So Kelly, do you see how it's not, it's not like all chunky. It's got a lot of liquid in there too. And then um, I, before I put my seals on, I'll make sure that there's no jam around the edge of the jar. You want to do that for me? You can. So basically, where the where the rim is right here, make sure your jam. I got a little bit more in there, and I should have probably um, come down a little bit below that. It needs to be wiped off with a paper towel. I don't think there's anything more gratifying than seeing your counter with uh, jars of jelly sitting overnight, like, oh, it's so pretty. And this consistency, I think it will, it will clear up and it will, it'll hopefully, <laughs> again, because I'm not using fresh berries. No. So fresh berries, like what, May the 1st, around, around the first week of May, supposedly. Um, what berries do you all get? Do you get Scott's berries? Anybody get something different than Scott's? Melissa was telling me about somebody else that 
tells them. I bought a bucket of strawberries from somewhere, but now I can't remember where it was. <laughs> okay. it, it may have been like Stanley's on the Levine going to Jonesboro, Stanley's okay. Produce. Okay, I'm, let me see what Melissa told me because she, I'm thinking that might be what she said. Um, let's see. No, coolies. She oh, said yeah. um, they used to bring buckets of coolies from Asheville Market. Have you heard of that, Angie? I think it's the same brand. I think they go to South Carolina to get them. Oh. So I think it's the same. I don't know if it's the same farm or not, but that sounds familiar. That name does. Okay. So let's see. If you had a little bit left over and you don't have a jar to put it in, sometimes, you know, just have like a, just a little custard dish or something and I'll just put it in that and that's what we will keep in the refrigerator to eat like tomorrow morning <laughs> with our breakfast. So I might have enough to fill one more little one like this. Maybe. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Look at there. Just the right amount. That bowl is good to lick too. Yeah, my husband, um, if he's in his office studying and I'll say, I have a bowl in here. And I can hear those wheels scoot back on his chair pad and <laughs> he's in here, but he washes the dishes. So help yourself. You wanna try it? Come and taste it. You know, Paula Dean always takes a spoon of it and you're like, I want some of that right now. Come over here, up. Mm, good. <laughs> All right. There we go. Ta-da, how long was that? 30 minutes. Um, one thing you, you would never do is like double your batch, like, right now like you know make let's do a big bowl and add two things of pectin i would never recommend that um i think that would be a little dangerous i would do repeat just do it all over again and i i've done that many times i'll do like a double recipe and usually if i double my recipe i have enough for the year if andrew doesn't come over <laughs> Okay, y'all, do you have any questions or comments? Do you put it in the freezer? Yes, so for right now, it'll sit on the counter for 24 hours. So this time tomorrow, I'll take it and put it in the freezer. But you could put it in the refrigerator too, if you're like a jar of it right now, and it'll stay in your fridge for a few weeks. But, um, yeah, so after it's, it's, it needs to set up for 24 hours, and you'll see it'll get, it's a really nice consistency. It's not runny like it was when I put it in the, in the jar. It'll set up and um, then it's ready to eat. So when you want to give it to someone, can they refreeze it or no? You just take it like out of the freezer and like take it right, like if I'm going to somebody's house, I take it frozen like that. And I'll say, this is freezer jam. If you don't want to use it now, go ahead and put it back in your freezer. Um, it's probably not the best. It would it would change the consistency a little bit, I think. So, yeah. Have you tried any of those other fruits that were listed on that? Peach. It's very good. Yes. Has anybody else tried any of the other fruits? I wish I could show you all. <laughs> Did 
Does it, did it taste good? Does it's it good. taste like the regular jam? It's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope you guys will do this and then slather it on some of that sourdough bread. <laughs> Not that the sourdough bread needs anything, right? <laughs> but thank you for um, coming on today and spending a little bit of your afternoon doing this. But um, I hope you'll have good success with it. And if you make it and you have trouble or whatever, just, you know, holler at me. I'll see what I can do to help you. But you can do this, can't you, Kelly? Yes. <laughs> You can do it. So, all right. If y'all don't have any questions, I'll let you go. And um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. See y'all. All right. Happy jamming. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah. I'll let you cut it off. Tell me where you watch the video.